Formula 1 returns to Albert Park in Melbourne, Australia for round 19, the penultimate round of this 2020 championship season. And a championship fight now reaching fever pitch between the two title contenders Josh Chiro and Lewis Hamilton, with only 9 points separating the two Brits. Both teams came into this race weekend focusing both on race pace and in the track for both drivers as described by Josh Chiro. It's been a bogey circuit for him as he often qualifies down the order but can manage to pull through a good race result and it can be much the same for Lewis Hamilton as well. He's had his fair share of bad luck around this circuit but also his fair share of good luck as well. Notably a win for debut for Ferrari back in 2015 and he's going to need a winning performance to strengthen his championship lead today. Hey guys, Rano here. Welcome back to Formula 1 for the Australian Grand Prix, the penultimate round here of the season and it's very windy as you can tell by all these flags and it's also a Red Bull front row with pole there on the right facing. So this championship, championship getting any closer, Red Bull they've been, like I said, they always start slow but then come good towards the end of the year. Now they've got a front row lockout for the first time this season, I think the first time in a while as well. And you've got Sergio Perry there, P16 in, in the Aston Martin, good qualifying there from him. Yeah, have a look there uh, at Alex Albon in the rubble on the front row for the first time in his career. And it looks like he might actually be on pole position from that camera angle. So the, the pole position is on the right side facing and from that, that was on that side. So Albon might be actually have his first ever pole position. And we've got Mick Schumacher, the outgoing champion there in P12. Starting inside the point places though, so I'm expecting the outgoing champion definitely could get some points from there. expecting him to move forward in that Williams Honda. Now taking a look at the formation lap now. Make sure everyone gets away from the grid and it is Alex Albon with his first ever career pole position and the Red Bull front row lockout. That's a very valuable five points in the championship there. Just giving them a little bit more security for P4. There's a bit of a Noah's Ark as well between the top ten. Then you've got the two Toyotas in third and fourth with Matt Cheeta ahead of Lewis Hamilton. And then come the two Alphas with Kevin Magnussen in P5 and ourselves in P6. Followed then by the two Renaults with Ocon in seventh and Hulkenberg in P8. So the stands is really it's the... Uh, de facto number two teammates so we'll manage to qualify the number ones with Sergio Sete Camera in the Alpha Tauri and Daniel Kvyat in the Mercs rounding up the top ten. Terry Anton starts from just outside in 11th but he's still inside the points with Mick Schumacher starting from 12th the only driver doing the alternate strategy starting on the medium tyres. With the other McLaren and Lando Norris in P13 ahead of the lead Ferrari Sebastian Vettel 14th and then the lead Canadian the other Williams of the TFE in P15. Sergio Perez almost made it out of Q1 starting from P16 Heading through the Alpha Tower with Pierre Gasly, who, given Alpha Tower's form of late, is way down the order. And you've got Charles Leclerc and, R and Russell, 18th and 19th, the drivers who are contesting this win. This is the race, I think, last year. There's Lance Stroll bringing up the rear in the second of the Aston Martins. Uh, looking at ourselves now, lining up in P6. As I said, qualifying around this track for us definitely isn't the best, and K-Mag, he's definitely been on it in qualifying throughout this year. And lining up now in... P6 is a good way for us to control because we're still starting towards the front, so we've got a lot of time to prepare now. Get all the, the settings and switches in the correct place. There's no way for the back row of cars now to land. Now we come to the five red lights for the start of the Australian Grand Prix. Lights out, and away we go. It looks like it's a good start there from both the Rebels. We've got a bit of movement there in the pack as well. Vash Pesha, Sebastian Vettel, going to go three, possibly going to go four. Why now? It's that one with the Rebels and the Toyotas side by side. Pinch there to the apex, and got pinch there on the inside. Nothing there really that we can do. In that situation, we've lost a few places there too. I think two of the runs. We get a good run though. We're going to try and come back now. Then on the run down into turn two, we're going to go to the outside line. They've one of the Toyotas now in the breaker zone. Keep it side by side with the Toyota going to pinch the the apex. Then we're going to get it around the outside line. This is a crucial move because this car takes a few hours to get the tyres up to temp. So any moves we can make now are absolutely critical. As you come down in three minutes later, we've got a bit of side by side actually now up in front as well. I uh, was trying to pull through now, side by side with the, the front pack's now pulling away. Got the Alpha Terry there, Sefti Camera side by side with Nico Hulkenberg. And then German there just managed to pull through, and Sergio gets a bit of a poor run, but just managed to hold up the pack ahead. The other Lee McLaren there of Rio Hunter there just managed to keep his position there ahead of the Indonesian. But Hulkenberg having a bad start along with ourselves. And we're still in P6, so we've maintained position, but now it's Lewis Hamilton behind us. And we have had a mare of a start. He started in P4, and now he's down to P7. We're ahead of him, that's exactly what we need. Ideally, of course, we need to win the race. Try and gain back as many points in the championship now as, as what we can. Any points we can gain on the Brit now will be would be, would be of course the advantage going into the finale race next time out in Japan. The Suzuka circuit we know to focus on the here and now. The game now on the back of Esteban Ocon looks to be a little bit slow here in the Renault. 
but coming up now towards the end of the first lap of the race now around the final corner this corner you see you need to get a good one through here even when one tries to stand chance of making moves on the start finish race Alex Albon now still leads the way setting there the fastest lap of the race coming down into turn one look close enough to make a move here on Alex on the Renault here of Leicester Man Ocon he most likely has a race seat confirmed for next year but we're going to be wanting to make some good performances to, uh, to please the Renault high for this year. Going to look for the inside once again. Going to stick the nose of the inside line. To have a little bit of a look trying to fill the mirrors there of the Frenchman. But nothing there really that we can do to try and make a move on the inside line of him. Now we come out then through the middle section once again. We're still right behind the back here of Leicester. Now we're looking for him, looking left, looking right, trying to make a move on him. Now we're going to try and go to the inside line. Going to stick the nose of the inside line. Now we're going to keep this up outside here with Espanol Ocon now coming through the corner. Now we're going to try and get a bit of there with Ocon on the, on the corner exit. And the key starts under Hamilton. Hamilton's going to try and force his way through as well. Like when they could lose, play a bit of a lock up there from Lewis Hamilton. Of course, Hamilton needs to follow us through absolutely every single move that we make because we, we, we're all about our game plays. And now we've got the Renault there, he was teammate. And now we've got Hulkenberg trying to make a move here. Oh, let's find out because Ocon has some, some sort of car issue. He's going very well. They've got the Alpha Tari there, look to make a move. Oh, the behind his window well, has Hulk manages to clear his teammates. Now Ocon going very, very slowly now. He's got the Alpha Tari. Now look to try and make a move on him now coming up. Into this right hander, gonna have a look there to the inside line. Got the McLaren there, looks to make a move as well. Oh, on the Ferrari there, Sebastian Vettel making moves further behind on one of the Williams cars as well. It's all kicking out. Ocon's just gone from fourth to about seventh or eighth in the space of space of a lap. We're still on the same lap that that, that all happened on. And now we've got yellow flags there out further behind. And they can cut the the Rebels going slowly down the stop. It was that album. I can't quite tell for that camera angle, but one of them's out of the race. Steerus now enabled. That's a shoot for the fast lap of the race. Max Verstappen from the front row, second place now out of the Grand Prix. Verstappen had such a good start, I mean, being in second place, following his teammate round. He was doing what he could. Verstappen, he was coming on so good at the end of the year as well, being a genuine threat up here. We, we could have used him once to try and take some points off Lewis Hamilton. But now they're moving a bit further on. And here at the final with the other Red Bull then of Alex Albon now, is backing up the pack. Was this a replay? Can't quite tell from his camera angle which which it is. Well, if it is it's the replay or if that's Albon. But either way, we got a teammate there right behind the back of him, Kevin Magnussen, coming up now into the corner. I think, I think it might end up being a, being a replay here of what happened to Verstappen. And they come there and then round the final corner. On to the start finish straight. What's going to happen here to him? Is he going to start pulling off the side? Or is this a, I still actually can't quite tell. I think actually it's going to be a move now. We've got it'll, it'll be the inside line now coming into town. going to be side by side here with the Rebel. Is that, is that the Rebel of Alex Albon? It is a Rebel, so it's, 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 it's the live feed. And now we've got K right now going for the lead of the Grand Prix. This, but I think Albon was still leading the way. Going three wide, possibly with the tie to look to make a move on the inside line. He's side by side. Now managed to go for the lead of the Grand Prix, giving his side by side then with our teammate. Now K going to squeeze and get the long way around. And he manages to make that move stick. And now, now teammate Kevin Madsen now takes the lead of the Grand Prix from Massachusetts. And we've got Albon now in third, looking under pressure now from ourselves. I mean, now he's, now he's lost the uh, his backup, really. He's his teammate right up behind him, being the, being the, the, the rear gunner. And now it's our teammate Kevin now leads the Grand Prix. That's what we need as well for the championship flag. Alpha pretty much have second place secured. Although it's mathematically possible that Renault could still take it in this race, but we need a good points all here, really. To secure second place in the championship here as well. Some good prize money for the end of the season for that. As we come now through that, that is such a good camera angle now, especially the aero shot here as well. There's that switch out. Whoever's doing the cameras needs a raise. They managed to get a good shot like that. But K Mag still pulling away a little bit. And they're going to show on those lost edges. The coin's under pressure for Masushita. K Mag, you had the lead just praising him as well. And he's not pulling away. Now he's going to lose it now to Masushita. Nikita Sama's side of the Japanese driver. Still yet to win a race this season. Still get yeah, his debut win in Formula 1. He's, he's been in the best car this season, but hasn't had the rub of the green. It's like today could go his way. And he now moves into the lead on the Grand Prix around the final corner. Because DRS will be enabled, so I don't know who's going to have it. You know, Albon is going to try and come back now by Kevin Magnussen. I think neither of them have got the been side by side over the line. No, they have to lead back on the inside. Into tail one, going to the inside line in Massachusetts. Albon fighting back now. Got the 100 to turn to 11. Now we're going side by side now with our teammate Kevin Magnussen. Going from first, possibly even to fourth now in the span of one straight. Now he made the move stick on our teammate Kevin Magnussen. Now Albon managed to get back to Squeezes his way back past Masuchita. Alba's not taking it lying down. He knows the camera's on him now. He knows, he knows Ripple's full focus now. Baby, for the first time this season, is on the tyre driver. He won a race back in Germany under lucky circumstances. He's got the chance now to try and win a race on merit, on legitimate circumstances now. Now he retakes the lead of the Grand Prix that he started on pole position for. So, you know, Alba's got the. He's up the ante. He's got some good pace here around. Round Albert Park, it seems now. All the back of Masuchita is going to go defensive to the inside line, going for a dive around the outside line of Masuchita. 
Which I'm making even again for a switch by Lima. Masashi looks like he's just got the, the traction there on corner exit. We know that you know, the other is not the best car in the world through the corners and not got quite the best aero in the world. We've got our teammate Kevin Magnussen and they're trying to come back to us. We've got to slow down so much behind the back of Masashi because that might even be his tactic now because Masashi, of course, he wants to win the race. Also, he needs to play his team game. He can back us, back us up now into the Toyotas and the runners behind as well. We now need to make sure we've got Hamilton now and Ocon. And that much to get themselves now to the back of this fight. So we've got what the top one, two, three is at the top six now, all separated by maybe just over a second or so. It's such close racing here towards the end season. The 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 same the front four or five teams really have closed up. Although with the points gap, you wouldn't really be able to tell now. And then as things start to come down a little bit, now it's Albon that leads the way for Massa Chief in a second. Now guys came back now coming back just now. For a move on the inside line, we didn't get a good run off the final corner. Oh, okay, going to keep himself up. Squeeze this contact, this contact. We came out here sideways, but it was such a good save there for Kevin Magnussen. He somehow managed to keep it in P4 as well, ahead of Lewis Hamilton. But now Hamilton's going to have a good run in now down into turn three. And we'll try and make a move on the team. No, he, how did he manage to hold that? I mean, why is he going for a move there anyway? He knows he's supposed to play together. I mean, we, get, we, all, we all have, us top six, all have a massive chance of winning this Grand Prix. But we're not going to win the race on lap nine. Come on, K-Lag, you've got, you got to think about it there, play the team game. You know, he's keeping it, keeping it right up behind the back here. Off Master Chichi now pulls it out, so Toyota, they're pulling the trigger now, going for the pit stops. And no one else is coming in, so Toyota trying something different here. With Nobu, it seems now, into the pits they come. And now what tyres are going to go in? It is going to be a one-stop race here. If you go to a set of medium tyres, or maybe in a set of hards, depending where you come in. And it's going to be a set of, I can't quite tell, I think it's a set of hard tyres there. For Master Chichi, so Toyota trying something different there on the strategy, it seems. Wait for now to come back and out onto the track, and it is a set of hard ties there for the Japanese driver. Now he's going to come back out now, side by side there with the Williams. And the Williams going to get clear to him, and the Williams there just manages to get himself clear. So the Toyota there, so going for an undercut strategy, but that has dropped out of Masashita there into traffic, although he has got a little bit of a gap. And everyone else, apart from Shumi being on a set of soft ties, it's not going to be too long before, before all of them that end up making their first pit stop as well. Now then, on to lap 11, so two laps further on from where Masashita stopped. We've stayed out along with Albon and our teammate K-Mag in third place, and I think Hamilton and everyone else at the front has stayed out now as well. But now then, it's time for us to come in now for our pissed up, and we'll be going to a set of medium tyres, going there three laps longer. Now then, right behind the back of Alex Albon, coming into the pillar, I don't think we can really get much closer without actually hitting into the back of him. That's going to be a pillar battle between Red Bull and Alfa Romeo. Coming on now, we need, a good, we need a good stop here from the Alpha Boys. I'm going to say off the, the media times here, yeah, it is a good stop there from Alpha Mo. We need to get us ahead of Valley's home, but not quite. I think the gap stayed pretty much the same, so... Yeah, both both our crews doing the best piss-offs that they can. And that's going to be about the run now down into the track. And now we've got the, the Williams there, can we clear this Williams car? So we go for a second, there's actually two laps, although they've the, the done wonders for us. And we come out there ahead, crucially, of the Williams, but the Williams, despite being on old tyres, going to have his tyres up to temperature, we're going to be under pressure now from Mick Schumacher, the outgoing We've had so many battles with the German already in his short Formula 1 career. He's going to try and go around the outside line of us, but we, we need to force him out. We just managed to force him out there with our better car, the superior car, over the Williams, which we wouldn't be saying that this time last year. But things have changed a lot over the uh, into this season from last year. Now you've got Masashita still on the hard tyres, not quite managed to catch up yet to the back of that Williams. Because Shumi being on the medium tyres, he's going to be going longer in this race as well. So it's going to be a few hours so that, that he can end up holding up everyone. But now then, looking at the Williams of Mick Schumacher now comes in for his pit stop. Now he's going into a set of, hard, of soft tyres or a set of hard tyres. I don't know which way Williams is going to go with a strategy. I mean, I mean, a set of softs would make sense just to do the, the the reverse strategy for what we are. That would be what makes the most sense here. It depends what they're going to do. There's going to be a set of hard tyres. So, Shimi are really not fancying his tyre wear around the circuit. He's wanting to avoid the soft tyres completely. I mean, he only got P12 in qualifying, which would have been on a set of softs because he didn't get thrown into Q3. So, yeah, the Williams not really liking the soft tyres around the circuit, it seems. Well, this circuit also has been a bit last year as well it wasn't the best for Shumi so maybe this is, maybe just this, this is the circuit like like me the bogey circuit for Shumi he's quite on a set of the hard tyres you can go to the end of the race he's going to be pushing like anything pretty much doing what Mark Webber did back in the Red Bull his Red Bull days where he'd go for a harder compound of tyres but he meant he could push harder on them so he didn't really have a pace deficit if that makes sense because the tyres would stay with him longer but now then it's Albon now that leads the way from ourselves we're still right on the back of the tyre driver not letting him out of our sight and then we've got Masashita still sticking with us because the more, the more we fight, the more he's going to keep Nobby with us. And of course, as the race goes on, his hard tyres are going to come into their own. We've got Kevin Magnussen in P4 ahead then of the lead of the Renaults of Mika Hulkenberg. 
all on, all on set, medium tyres, and then, and then we've got Lewis Hamilton, who's a bit far down the so Hamilton not having the best race this time out, and now what tyres is Hamilton on? And he's on a set of medium, so tyres is explaining the strategy, and then we had the leader of the McLarens there, bringing up a, uh, a good but quiet race here for Harry Anto, getting some good points at the minute for McLaren, and then on the lead of the Alfa Tari's of Sergio Sette Camera, and those late, rate, those late season upgrades really are pointing through for Alfa Tari to secure them in nice place. Of course, they're not going to go out of business, they're not going to go bust because they are funded by Red Bull, but any money Red Bull can save, I'm sure would be a, uh, a welcome to them. You've got one of the Aston, Mar Aston Martins here, very far up the order as well. Sergio Perez are holding up the the, uh, the main works team there. One of them, Mercedes, is going to try and go around the outside line. Russell versus Perez now into the right hander. Can Russell go the long way around? He's got a bad downforce on that car. The, the, although the Mercedes isn't the best car in the world this is, this season, it's still better than the Aston Martin. Going to keep it side by side there with that very distinctive livery of the Aston with the, the neon yellow there with the BWT pink in it still as well. But Perez keeps it through. Going to try and make a move around the outside line. Then turns the inside to the final goal. But Russell there with the bare line with the racing line managed to make the move stick. But he's got it. It's Perez though who has DRS going down instead. Going to pull back to the inside line of George Russell, who only 12 months ago almost won this Grand Prix, but now he's fighting for the the back end of the points places. I mean, to be fair, for a Mercedes to be in the points is kind of an achievement at this point in the season. And now Perez once again going to try and come back at Russell. Russell just passed the car perfectly, so Russell, we haven't really seen much of him this season, because mainly because the Mercedes car has been a bit obsolete throughout the entirety of this season. I mean, Kvyat got a podium back at the first race in Canada, but that's that's pretty much been Mercedes' high point throughout the year so far. And we've got Gassi still quite a way down the order, all the way back here with Esteban Ocon, so Ocon has dropped all the way down to the back of the grid, basically. There's something that's really gone wrong as well. I know Renault, their reliability has been really marginal towards the end of the season, so maybe Ocon's got some some more engine issues. Because since he, he made for place January then, but he inherits all of what were Verne's engine parts, so if Renault didn't really do the best job of, of working out the engine well, then that's not really Oko's, Oko's problem, he just has to be stuck with it. And then looking at our teammate now, Kevin Magnussen, is coming under pressure from Nico Hulkenberg in the Renault. Hulk with Dieras can try and go in the outside line of the day now into turn one. He can try and keep into turn three, keep it side by side here with Kevin Magnussen. And Tosin Salama came out, is going to keep it side by side, keep his nose in. We know, we know Kevin Magnussen is never going to give up in a fight, he can keep it side by side, still with a bit of a Once again, Kevin Magnussen flirting with danger. And oh, it's an engine failure! Hulkenberg's got an engine failure, that could have been that contact, has that contact punctured the radiator, but Hulkenberg's engine's blown, and so have Renault's chances of getting any points from this Grand Prix. Just seeing the slightest bit of contact there from Kevin Magnussen, he must have just whacked the radiator in the wrong place, and the engine's immediately gone up in smoke. I think the engine must have that engine must have been nearing the end of his life anyway, and just that little knock was enough to send it over the edge. And Hulkenberg pulls off now out of this Grand Prix, and is straight, and then from that we switch straight to the Williams here of Nicholas Latifi. You thought you see along with his teammate, they've they've had their moments. They've been in many cases the human highlight reels in some of the Grand Prix throughout this season. Now he's got the throw there of Charles Leclerc getting on the back of him on the run down into turn one. It's a throw close to try and make a move. That's a good defensive there from the Ferrari of the far table by Chubby Sassetto, who I'm sure when he started the Ferrari for this year wasn't expecting to be battling in like 15th or 16th place wherever he is currently. It's been trying to go around the outside line here of the Williams. He's also on to say at hard tyres as well, so both the Williams going on to their hard. So yeah, Williams really are fancying their tyre way around this circuit. Keeping it side by side, try and go around the outside lines of fresher tides, but gets a squeeze there from Latifi, and he just manages to hold it. It's a nice, really nice defending there from the Canadians to hold off the five time champion who won, his, who, who won a championship in his TV season with Ferrari back in 2015. But honestly, it's all kind of been downhill since then. Now we've got Ocon starting to come back into things now, so I think Renault may have fixed whatever was wrong with his car, but I think it might end up being too little too late now for that. And now then back towards the fight up front. We've still got Albon leading the way there from ourselves and Matashita. And we've got our teammate Kevin Manx in there, who's now caught up to the back. So after making that contact earlier on, he's managed to now actually put the hammer down now and catch back up. So I don't know what's happened to Hamilton in this race. Hamilton really has just dropped off ever since the end of the first stint, really. But now we've got Matashita now with the DRS now getting on the back of us with that, that car so quick in a straight line, if you, as we know, full one throughout this season. Going down to one, Magita has a little bit of a long distance on it. Takes, takes the compromise line though, goes for a little half hearted move. That's going to leave the compromise now on the run down into turn three. Now, got our teammate Kevin Anderson going to try and make a move, trying to get onto the podium now. Came out with the DRS as well, but that Toyota's suited to it. In a straight line fight, the Toyota car will be quicker than our, than our Alfa Romeo, but it's not by much though. We, we've definitely been closing as the season's gone on. 
and then on to lap 27 towards the end of the lap now just over two last this race left to go it's still at ice with, with with the defensive drive of the century you think he was down in p4 one lap and, and, and then within the space of one lap got back into the lead that was a mega drive and then that, that, that may even well be overtaken of the season for Manning's album it's definitely going to be up there but the pace is starting to drop off now a little bit towards the end of this race now Still, we're going to be pushing flat out using everything we've got. We haven't got that much Richmond left to play with. I'm using that on the straights, having to balance that with the ERS as well. We're down to about half battery. And of course, as the components come towards the end of their life, they're not going to hold as much charge and not really use it as efficiently. So, it's all about pushing the the, uh, the Ferrari components that we have to the limit. We're only a tenth down through sector one, so the pace is still sticking here. Of course, Albon is running us to his pace as well. Now we're getting a good run here though on the tie driver, getting in the switch on the back of Valley Salbo. Go for a move around the outside line. We go away on the cross. I got he locks up. We have to give him space and we get a poor run. And now Albon again manages to pull away a little bit of a lock up there from Albon. A mistake from him actually ends up giving him a bit of a lead. And now we've got Massey Shikta. We have to try and fend off the Japanese driver now. Can we get into the fashion game? We've got the inside line. And sure, you can get, try and keep it through. Manchester Shikta has a look around the outside line, but we managed to force him out. And that's gives Albon such a lead now. We have to back out that move because Albon lost some hitters. He was a lot up off front wing. We have to go to a bit of self-preservation mode. Let's give Albon the absolutely massive lead. As we, as we take a very questionable line there through that corner. We managed to get away with it. We pull away. You know, we could do every, absolutely everything we can to try and gain back on Albon. You saw, we had the pace over him. We were gaining on the tie, Brett. Number goal one out of two. Are we even in DRS range of him? I don't think we are actually. Going on now, we've passed the DRS point. We're not in DRS. We haven't even got that protection now. And we're trying to hold off Massey Chow to follow the group. We've got one and a half seconds to gain on Alex Albon. That lock up may end up being his lucky break, or more of a lucky break if you want to bring the terrible puns into this. And now we're getting now down into turn two. Turn three, and we just managed to hold off Massive Cheetah. Uh, once again, that's why uh, you only really got one of taking Cheetah if you need to try and gain what you can to it. And running in Richmond now, using up everything we can. Three minutes later, we, we, we see we're gaining so much time here on Alex Albon. We're gaining time to hand over fist on him. But he, like I say, there's no point having a massive lead if you're not going to use it. And then we, we actually set the purple first set of pushing this car to the absolute limits now, using all the end. All the engine modes, all the extra fuel we have saved as well. We've got plus 0.16 no extra fuel, so no got. I mean, we can't run rich till the end of the race, but if we do it now through here, we get a pull on there over the curb. It's going to lose us, lose us a little bit of time. But if we can set the fastest lap of the race, gain back an extra point. That is exactly what we need with Lewis Hamilton down the order. We, we go, we go, purple, we go, we go green through the middle sector. We're four tenths up now on our personal best lap. Just showing the pace that we've got. We just haven't managed to find a way to make a move past Alex Albon throughout this race so far. We're back now down into standing base, back down into medium ERS to play as well. So we just haven't got the engine modes left to play with now. And we've got one one corner left for you to make an overtake duty cutting up here. If we don't make a move, we go for it. We definitely do kind of go for it in the century. Otherwise, we're just allowed to take him out of the race along with ourselves as well. And then around the final corner, if Albon's car can just hold on towards the end of the line, what I think he's going to do, he can just coast that way. And Alex Albon's going to win the Australian Grand Prix with a lucky lock up there, just managing to hold it. But I mean, he takes the win on merit. Really, really good race. Good job on the tyres. Thanks, guys. Really, really good job, Alex. Thank you for the hard work last night. What a superb victory. Somebody, the team there, very happy with that performance. He's got a little bit lucky. You, you, you've always got to have a little bit of luck in Formula 1. And Alex Albon now takes the win on merit. And now the race is over, I can just point out, if things seem a little bit off with the comment, like timing-wise with the commentary, it's because... Bandicam doesn't really want to work today. I've, tr I've tried restarting my computer, restarting Bandicam a couple times. I've, I've just tried to make the best of it. It's working better now than it was. But I still don't think it's going to be that great. But Alex Albon, though, still can't take things away from him. Winning the Grand Prix. And it's time for the champagne. As, as Albon there sprays us now with the champagne. Sprays his team as well. Gets his second win now in Formula 1. And if there's a way for Rebel to make a statement at the end of the year, this is definitely how you do it. Taking a look at the end results, and Alex Albon gets his second career win. Eight tenths clear of ourselves, but we do crucially take the fastest lap and get that extra point. That can make all the difference with one race left to go at Japan ne next time out. And Matsushita completes the podium for Toyota in third. K-Mag finishes in P4, just behind the podium. And Lewis Hamilton way down in 5th, 16 seconds off, so... And I think he may have had some sort of car issue and just did what he could to finish as high as he could. We have Rio Harianto with an excellent race to finish in P6. 
Uh, very crucial seven points there for McLaren as they try and close back on Ferrari for seven of the constructors. And we've got Sergio Setecano once again pulling it out of the bag, finishing in seventh place ahead of both of the Mercedes of Danny Kivia and George Russell. They're only separated by a second and a half in. So Russell with some good ending pace. And Sergio Perez in P10 getting some points for Aston Martin. And Lando Norris 11th place. And Aston Martin sneaking back into the points. Just about in 12th for Renault. And all this means with one race left to go. We are only one point behind Lewis Hamilton. So that means basically if one of us wins the next race we win the championship. But of course it's not going to be as simple as that. And a 5 for 3rd place looks to be secure now for Masashita. Um, definitely way ahead now of Nico Hulkenberg. There's still a chance that Hulk could do it, but he's going to need a miracle if he's to get 3rd in the championship. And Verstappen now looks like he's going to be set now in 5th place, although only 5 points ahead of K-Mag, so if he can pull out another great and Magnussen could sneak back into the top 5. And Alex Albon now only 20 points behind our teammate, and if he can win another race like he did today, there's only a chance that the other Red Bull driver can end up in P6. We're trying to find in 7th place. And with Danny Kvyat P9 in the Mercedes on 86 points, only 2 points clear off Nick Schumacher. With the Tifi and the other Williams in P11. Joint on points with Sebastian, with Sebastian Vettel, but on better result, the Tifi holds that with his podium he scored back at Germany. And with a lot of the midfield teams getting points, not a large change up front. So uh, the champions for this year, 79 points clear of Alfa Romeo. And Alfa now over 100 points clear of Renault in third, with Red Bull looking very secure in that fourth place, I mean, he, he's never really in doubt anyway. And we've got Williams there, this is where the fight is now, Williams are in fifth place on 145 points. So they're only nine points clear now off Mercedes with a double points hold today, who are on 136. And then the fight for seventh place now closes to within one point as well, with the Scuderia now only one point clear of McLaren, so there's a lot of midfield glory to play for. In the final race, Alfa Tari looking very secure now in P9 on 79 points. With Aston Martin in 10th, we're still on a very respectable 54 points given that the chassis of the car is what the Haas car would have been for this year, which we all know wouldn't really have been anything special. So remember to vote for your driver of the day with the poll link in the description for this race. Honestly, this has been one of the most action-packed and I think per one of my personal favourite races to have ever, ever happened in this series. Up there... Definitely with, uh, I say Austria 2015, with that was such a chaotic race, but for, for a, a crashes reason, the air airborne crashes, everyone, and even Will Stevens in the manor got points in that race. So, yeah, this is definitely up there with one of the best races. Yeah, so remember to leave a like if you enjoyed the video and check out the wiki for this season, which will be linked down in the description below, just above the driver of the day link. And that is, if you know what, what wiki is, it's basically fandom Wikipedia. And I edit that myself after each race, so there's about 76 or something like that pages. So that there's a page for every team, every driver to have ever been in the series since the start of the 2014 season. And yeah, I edit it myself. It's definitely taken a lot of time if you think about it collectively as well. So I'd appreciate it if you could go and give that a read. And there's maybe even a sneak peek as what's to come up for next season as well on there. If you know what that is, definitely go and check that out. Yeah, so thanks for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed one of the best races of this entire series. Leave a comment down below, subscribe if you're new, hit that notification bell so you don't out any future videos. You can give me a follow on Twitter and Instagram, that'd be much appreciated. They'll be linked in the description down below as well. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time. One race left to go, the championship deciding race at Suzuka. It's going to be a cracker, Toyota's home race.